Sports. We are the Bucks. We are Celtics. At long last, we join you for the final time in New York City and City Field as the Braves try to take two out of three from the New York Mets. Ronald Acuna and company hopes to get some offense going after Jacob DeGrom pitched a magnificent game in a game two shutout. Hi again friends Chip and Joe welcome back to the ballpark Atlanta still in command of its own destiny as far as home field advantage is concerned in the National League playoff race and with a nod toward March Madness let's take a look at the October bracket as it stands right now partner the Braves at the moment would face off with the Colorado Rockies who won today and swept the Philadelphia Phillies and have a one game lead over the Dodgers out west so it could be the Braves and Rockies meeting in a round one matchup and that would certainly be very interesting considering how things worked out head to head between Atlanta and Colorado. They're the Western standings. Who do you like Rockies or Dodgers against the Braves in a first round matchup. Well first of all I love that bracket and those numbers that you saw in the bracket where the the, where the seeds are right now as of today and yes the Braves would play the Rockies so when you want to match up with the Rockies and Dodgers here's how Atlanta did this year two and five against both fewer runs against the Dodgers that's because they're number one in the league in ERA they're number one in walks they're number one in strikeouts the Rockies are in the top three or four with the Dodgers in offense too so though both clubs can hit they can pitch the Rockies can play defense the Dodgers are not quite as good defensively as Colorado the numbers against the left handed pitchers of which there are several good ones for both of those teams not as good as the numbers overall for the year against those two teams so there are things to like and want to play against some uh, one of those teams there's a lot of things you don't want to mess with with one of those teams so it doesn't really matter who the Braves play both teams are playing good baseball right now. And as you said, the Rockies just got through finishing off a sweep of the Phillies today. So for Atlanta, just win and maintain home field advantage. That'll be a big key. And they'll face a left-hander in Jason Vargas, which could be a tune-up for that uh, first-round matchup with Colorado or Los Angeles. Let's turn the tables and talk about Julio Tehran. He's got the ball for Atlanta. And like Tuki Toussaint and like Sean Newcomb, Julio is well, perhaps pitching for a spot in the Braves' postseason rotation tonight. I don't think there's any question about that. You know, who's who's got the hot hand right now? Sean Newcomb pitched well well last night but again he walked a bunch of guys in his five innings of work he didn't give up a run he was able to pitch around it for Julio September has been a mixed match a mismatch of numbers for him because he doesn't have that many wins in fact he's walked a bunch of guys and struggling however he's pitched really well here if he wants to put on a good show tonight this is the ballpark for him his last six starts here outstanding with a 132 ERA and this will be his last opportunity to show the staff that he wants that number four spot in the rotation and maybe the biggest inning that Julio Tehran will pitch tonight will be the very first inning we'll delve into those numbers in just a few moments as you know Dansby Swanson was hurt here in New York Kelsey Winkert is standing by with an update on Dansby's medical condition Dansby's back in Atlanta and hopefully healing quickly for the Braves as we meet the Mets in game three in just a few moments.
Braves and the Mets here at City Field. The final time that these two teams will meet in this season. Now if you missed the news yesterday Dansby Swanson with a partially torn ligament in his left hand after an awkward swing back on Tuesday night. Now the Braves have ruled him out for the regular season as he undergoes daily treatment in Atlanta. But now the question is if we're going to see him in the postseason. Well we spoke to Brian Snicker about that earlier today and he said that the training staff is telling them that they're going to need at least 48 hours to see how Dansby is reacting to the treatment to even get a better read if he will be available for them in the postseason. But as of now he is getting those daily treatments and Brian Snicker said we can expect to hear some news from him hopefully on Saturday. So make sure you're staying tuned to us because we will get you that information right as we get it. But the good news is is that the Braves have Charlie Culberson and they have already clinched the NLEs. We're getting you ready for the series finale with Ozzy Albies and Ronald Acuna Jr. coming up. Julio Tehran taking the mound. We'll be right back for first pitch after the break. About to take two out of three for Brian Snitker and earn their 90th win in the process. Ronald Acuna is standing patiently outside the batter's box waiting for the clock to tick to 7:10 Eastern time. And as he waits, here's a look at Brian's Toyota starting lineup. It's a very different look. Freddie Freeman gets the evening off. Ender Inciarte gets the night off as well. That's why Marquez is third, Suzuki fourth, and Ryan Flaherty is in playing first base with Adam Duvall in left against the left-hander Jason Vargas of the Mets. Jason Vargas pitched pretty well his last seven starts, his best stretch of the year, going four and one with a 3.11 ERA. He's 35 years old, six feet, 2.10 out of Apple Valley, California. Low to mid 80s fastball with a split finger pitch and a changeup. And the first pitch is cut on and sky to center to Brandon Nimmo. One pitch and one man out. Nice of the Mets to arrange a flyover as Ronald Acuna stands in. His great numbers in the second half certainly worthy of that kind of a salute. However, he's retired and we're underway here in the first inning. Here's Ozzy. Ozzy's hit a homer in this series. That came in the eighth inning of game one when the Braves pulled away. And one going away seven to three. As that went in for a strike says Field and Culbreth oh and won the count. Ozzie batted seventh last night. He's hitting second tonight and he guides that one towards short Rosario nice play and the throw to first just in time nice scoop great play by the shortstop of the Mets Rosario for out number two. That was an outstanding play. 
I think the Braves might want to take a look at it make sure he got him. And it appears that he did the Braves will not challenge. Oh boy was that close. Nice play by Smith too. So two quick outs for Nick Markakis. Nick trying to get to 200 hits for the season. He's got 184 of them. And is batting 301 for the year. Nick, a couple of hits in this series. Those came in the series opener. He also walked. And Vargas delivers a strike. Again, as I said in our opening comments, this is a big opportunity for the Braves. They haven't seen many left handers of late. Chance to tune up against Southpaws with the Rockies and Dodgers lurking in the playoffs and all of the Southpaw pitchers they have. And despite his high ERA and his losing record, as you said, Joe, Vargas is pitching about as well as anybody from the left side of the National League right now. He is certainly for the Mets and a mixed bag against Atlanta. Nothing mixed about his 1 2 3 first inning. A very easy opening frame for the Mets left hander. Julio Teran to work. No score after half inning. Here in New York, as we showed you, Julio's enjoyed pitching against the Mets here at City Field. Something the Braves hope will continue here in September. Looking for his 10th win of the year. This month, however, a mixed bag for him. No wins, but a good ERA. The difference 15 walks in 23 innings. He's averaging a strikeout per inning, but 13 walks issued in his last three starts. He cannot do that tonight and expect to earn a spot in the Final rotation selection his four keys to the game first inning trouble try, got to try and avoid that gave up a leadoff homer to Cesar Hernandez leading off the game his last time out against the Phillies and fastball command work both sides of the plate and use the fastball don't fall in love with his secondary stuff and that fastball command will be tested right away for Mickey Calloway's Mets Brandon Nimmo who's walked five times in the first two games of the series. And 27 times this month will lead off and he takes a first pitch strike. 78 walks for Nimmo and a 259 average. When the Braves have induced contact they've retired him twice. And no contact there it's quickly 0 and 2. Braves had a shift on form now they move out of it with the 0 2 count. Sorry Chip his last start against Philadelphia had a good fastball one of his better ones of the year. Popping around 93. First two pitch to pitches tonight at 88. That one up there at 91 and foul back. It is a much more comfortable night to play and pitch, I would think, than it was the first two nights with all the rain and humidity in New York. Very comfortable weather. Once the front went through, it is truly a an autumnal feel to Game Three for the Braves and Mets. Come on. Low humidity, gentle breeze blowing. Let's see if Julio can have a refreshingly good performance for Atlanta tonight. 
vocabulary. Well, not the best part of the South, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we've been in the fall for almost a, a week, and you just broke out a ton of Got to save it for the big audience, Joe. Okay. <laughs> Snippo digs in with an 0 2 count. off the plate you might see some odd fits and starts by both pitchers in the game we are in the flight pattern apparently from LaGuardia that's why Julio paused a moment for delivering that pitch that missed one ball two strikes fly ball toward left Duval on the run that's over his head it bounces in the middle of the warning track and Brandon Nimmo hustles into second with a leadoff double on a 1 2 pitch. So Julio in first inning soup again. Breaking ball stayed out over the plate. Nimmo did a good job of hitting it the other way. And when that ball started slicing, Duvall had overrun it a little bit and it got over his head. If memory serves, the Braves have been hurt by the breaking ball quite a bit in this series. And Nimmo with a leadoff double, his 28th two base hit. Here's Rosario. He's got 70 hits since the All Star break. He's already made a fine defensive play at short. And that's off the plate, ball one. Rosario, one for eight in this series, is one for 10 head to head with Julio. Ahmed led off last night and went one for four. But Kirk got crossed up there. He's going to go out and check with Julio on that. You know this this first inning issue for Julio. A 7.20 ERA in the first inning and a very good ERA thereafter. Yeah. You know, yeah, he definitely got crossed up. So that brings up a, a point with regard to working out of the bullpen. There are those those splits. If you come out of the bullpen, if Julio comes out of the bullpen and in his first inning, he's got that kind of trouble to try to get settled in. He doesn't have time to get settled in. No. That's been a remarkable trend all year for him. The hit by Nemo, only the third hit by a leadoff batter in the first inning against him. Most of the punishment Julio has taken has been self inflicted with all the walks. He's walked 10 first batters to start a game. And walks, as we've said ad nauseum, are rallies. So it was a leadoff double by Nemo and Rosario. Ahead in the count here, two balls and a strike. Very light schedule. The Phillies are making their way back to Philadelphia. They're limping home after an 0 and 8 road trip. The Rockies swept them today, 5 to 3 at Coors Field. Colorado plays Washington the final weekend. Swing and a miss. We play the Phillies starting tomorrow night. L.A. is idle. They've got the Giants for the final weekend. So Colorado with a one game lead going into the final do or die weekend out west. Two balls two strikes. And a swing and a miss Rosario can't move the runner up. There's a big out for Julio. So a double and a strikeout brings up Jeff McNeil. He's been impressive in this series. And frankly, he's been impressive since getting the call in late July to play second base. He's batting third tonight for Mickey Calloway on the Toyota starting lineup. Hottest hitter in the National League East might be Michael Conforto. He's the cleanup man. You see the rest of the Mets as they face Julio here tonight. McNeil at 375, excuse me, 335 on the year. And 32 September hits. Strike one. He made a terrific diving catch last night in the seventh inning for Jacob DeGrom. 
Off the bat of Ender Inciarte might have been a game changing. Catch of a line drive for the first out might have led to a Braves rally in what was a one nothing New York game. So he's done it all. He's been very impressive. Yeah, I, that play made last night was kind of almost like um, a sign that Braves are not going to win this game. The Grom's pitching great. They're playing great defense behind him. End of story. McNeil behind in the count 0 and 2. Nimmo a good lead at second. And now time is called. Well, we were sorry to see the Braves lose last night. Speaking personally, it was a real treat to watch that man pitch that game last evening. I don't know what more emphasis he needs to make or put on an outing in trying to reserve his spot for the Cy Young Award. I don't know what more he could have done. Set down the last 20 in a row. No balls, two strikes. Fly ball, that's hit toward Duvall and left. He'll drift back and shy of the track is there to make the play. So Rosario's inability to get Nimmo to third base may have cost the Mets a run for the moment. Julio gets the big second out. And now it is Conforto versus Tehran with a runner at second and two out. I would pitch this guy very, very carefully. Yeah, you've got a base open. The way he's going right now, don't don't look at his batting average because it's his September numbers: nine homers, 29 RBIs for the month. And a hook for a strike. There are only two Mets who have had 29 or more RBIs in the month of September: Daryl Strawberry and Gary Carter. Not Ed Cranepool. Not Ed Cranepool. Not even Keith Hernandez. Not even Ron Darling. Ron may have given up 29 runs in September once, but didn't drive in 29. That'd be a good month for Ron. He didn't. One ball, one strike for Michael Conforto. See that Houston and Baltimore have been postponed. With Houston in town, do you think Baltimore just had somebody come out and flood the field? Well, at 46 and 112, nothing else has worked, so mm -hmm. they are 60 and a half games out of first place. The pitch. He's looked at foul. That is not funny. Got a lot of friends over there on that staff. Roger McDowell, John Russell, Buck Showalter. What a long, long year. They've won 19 games on the road all year. 19. So Monday can't come soon enough for the Orioles in 2018. The pitch is bounced foul and headed for the screen. As the Mets continue to bat here in the bottom of the first inning, Julio will need at least 20 pitches to retire the Metropolitans tonight. Let's see what Tehran has in mind here a ball and two strikes. We've said this many times about Julio, but it bears repeating. He has a 199 batting average against him coming into play tonight. That's the sixth best in the major leagues. He had thrown 169 and two thirds innings. He'd only given up 120 hits. So cut the walks in half and see what happens. It's almost miraculous. He's got a winning record uh -huh. with. The high walk total. In fact, there's been only one Brave that's finished the season holding the opponents below a 200 batting average, and that's Greg Maddox. Who did that in 1995? There's only been one guy that's walked more than Julio, also, and that was Russ Ortiz, who walked 112 one year. So 
And now a payoff pitch to Conforto is popped up back our way, but into the seats and just out of reach of the fans below us. Good to see young players like Conforto succeeding. Good to see young players like Conforto come back from what could be devastating injuries. He tore up his left shoulder badly last year. And he has finally gotten the strength back and is having a spectacular final month. Something for him and the Mets to build on this offseason. And this one's popped up. Duvall is going to come in and Julio's going to pitch around a leadoff double. Good work. The strikeout of Rosario, the key play in that inning, and we head to the second. No score. Way back in 2005, can you believe it? The Baby Braves won an MLB record 14th straight division title. They finished the season at 90 and 72, a record this year's edition of Baby Braves could pass if they can win at least two more games here in 2018. Pretty good crew right there. And there's one of the Baby Braves, Jeff Rancour, who frankly still hasn't grown up. Was Chip? <laughs> <laughs> He'd be the first to admit it. Don't kid yourself. Working with Jim Powell on Braves Radio tonight. As we head to the second inning, no score. Kurt Suzuki will lead off. Cleaning up tonight is Kurt. With Freddie Freeman and Ender getting the night off. First pitch put in play by Suzuki tonight is in the air to right field on an 0 1 count, and Vargas has retired the first four in order. One away. Nice turnaround for Vargas who got off to an absolutely dreadful start and the Braves really shillelied him a time or two before he started to figure things out. He's given up three or fewer runs in seven of his last nine games. So again ignore the record ignore the high ERA it's how he's pitching now that matters. Signed late. You know, it took him a while to get going. Had one game against Atlanta this year where he lost 11 to nothing. One and two on the season in three starts with a 6-14 ERA thanks to that one bad game. Got away with one there. Johan wants to know if it was a strike, and he faces a one-two count. Love to get to the 20 homer mark this year. He's got 18 so far this season. 75 runs batted in. And remember, he started the year on the disabled list. 
And a swing and a miss retires him two strikeouts for Vargas five up five down for Charlie Culberson. Lots and lots and lots of change ups and off speed pitches to Johan. That uh, have been effective lately. Let's see what Mr. Culberson can do for Atlanta. Is that one in for a strike? Charlie has seven hits against the Mets this year, one of them a homer. And tonight makes his 17th start at shortstop. Oh, and two. Yeah, it sounded like today, to follow up on what Kelsey said about Dansby Swanson, that the 48 hours since he was examined and determined what the injury was, they kind of need to let the swelling go down, the inflammation, then they'll have a better idea of how to deal with it and try to get him back on track. As I said last night, it's just just heartbreaking, you know, when you put in a full year and played so hard and especially from on his defensive side made such great improvements. Strike three at 86 mile an hour fastball freezes Culberson. He thought it might have been too tight but fielded Cobra brings him up and we head to the home second. Eighty nine and seventy one half game behind the Braves for the potential home field advantage matchup if those clubs matched up in postseason play the Rockies would have home field advantage if they finish with the same record by virtue of winning the season series five games to two. But if the Braves just keep winning and take care of their own business doesn't matter what Colorado or L.A. does. As Jay Bruce leads off and strokes one towards center Acuna broke back for an instant but he's there to make the play and Bruce here's the first out. So Julio got the first inning out of the way looked a little shaky to start but the big strikeout helped bail him out of trouble. Now hopefully he can settle in for as poorly as he's pitched Joe in the first inning from the second inning on he's been a whole lot better. And he made some good pitches to Conforto after getting ahead in the count. 
Now Todd Frazier swings at the first one, skies this one to left. And Duvall is there. He's been busy. That's his third catch. Two away. Boy, Frazier's stumbling to the finish line. 0 for 8 in this series and 4 for his last 41. Dominic Smith, however, is sprinting to the finish. At least in this series, he's looked good. A couple of big hits for the Mets, three of them, in fact, including a home run. Smith has a single, a homer, and a double in the first two games. That's outside, ball one. I can't imagine how hard it is to be a rookie in the major leagues. I certainly can't imagine how hard it is to be a number one pick in a rookie. And maybe the worst of all, to have to play in the fever pitched atmosphere of New York as a high draft choice and a rookie and off to a slow start. That's the fate of Dominic Smith at the moment. Fouled away one and two. Got to have a thick skin and you got to have a lot of confidence in yourself for those times that aren't going your way. One ball, two strikes, base is empty. And fouled away. Mets didn't do a whole lot at the trading deadline. They kept their starting pitchers in rotation. Syndergaard, DeGrom, Wheeler, Mats, and now Vargas is pitching well. Back in September, they're Starting staff has the lowest ERA in baseball at 273 for the final month. Mickey Callaway's already shut down Zach Wheeler after 100 more innings this year than last season and a brilliant comeback year. Syndergaard and DeGrom, of course, are. At least DeGrom is done for the rest of the season. Syndergaard might pitch the final day of the year against the Marlins. But that gives them hope. They're 58 and 56 when those four starters pitch in rotation this year. Put two outs for Julio. Now he's gone full on Smith. And he gets a pop up. Flaherty drifting back, back pedaling. And he is called off by Ozzy Albies and <laughs> says, What are you doing? <laughs> the kid takes charge and a pop out retires Dominic Smith. <laughs> We go to a score of three. Dress up day. So last night the players went back to their lockers. They found their designated jerseys. 
and they had to wear them all day today and they were elves and that is our T-Mobile built for baseball. Now you may see some guys in these pictures like Ozzy Albies and Johan Camargo who aren't rookies. Well the unofficial rule is that you have to have a full year of service time before that season ends to escape the embarrassment and I spoke to Peter Moylan. He said the seniors had a meeting last week to choose the theme and he tossed the idea that since they would be in New York City where the movie Elf was filmed now that's how they came up with this so my friends now we have 16 talented elves for the Atlanta Braves. Wonder if they were in a store and they were singing earlier today. Because singing is their favorite. They might have been. <laughs> Hi pop by Adam Duvall. And this one will be handled by Conforto in left. Braves need a base runner. It's been a while. Seven up, seven down for Vargas tonight. It's 30 in a row that have been set down. No, I don't. Where do you go to find that many elf outfits? Bob? Bob, our stage manager, would certainly know. Maybe seven elf, elf Evan. <laughs> I don't know. We're asking Bob, our stage, where do you go to find elf outfits in New York? What did you say, second street? He said 42nd Street. <laughs> Times Square. Perfect. Yep. <laughs> Ryan Flaherty is the hitter. And there's a base hit. We asked for a base runner, and Ryan provides one. And you know what? That snaps an 0 for 22 for Ryan Flaherty. You get called off on a pop up, and good things happen. An 0 for 22 spread out over about three months. Yes. Big old hook. He was. All over it. Good for Ryan. Let's see if Julio can move Flaherty into scoring position. Julio's got 11 sacrifices on the year. He's also got two hits against Vargas. And he had to move his feet to get out of the way of that one. One ball, no strikes. And now an even count. Julio does so many good things fundamentally when he's putting bunts down. That's why he has 11 of them this year. One of them is that he moves up into the front of the box. So that when he does get the ball down, there's a very good chance it'll stay fair. There you can see that, that move. That right at the top of the zone. So Vargas to the stretch for the first time in the game. Hits are even at one apiece. The count even. One ball, one strike, and now one and two. So is the bunt on or off? Ron Washington with the signs in the Braves' third base coaching box. No swing. Two and two. Vargas missed with a fastball. Now it's full. Trying to give him an out, and he can't throw it over the plate. Ryan Flaherty with the Braves' first hit. Is it first? And the bunt is hard back to the mound. Vargas thought about second, but makes the smart play to first. And it is a successful sacrifice for Julio and Ronald Acuna is coming up with the chance to plate the game's first run. 
Nice job there by Julio with two out. I mean with two strikes and with two strikes you can't be quite as perfect or fine in terms of where you bunt it. So they just put it right back to the mound. And Ronald Acuna Jr. will stride to the plate. Here are his numbers since the All-Star break. That is presented by Sonovas, our Greatness Made Here feature. And Joe, he has been great since being placed on the lineup card in the first position in that series against Washington right after the break. And that's not just rookies, that's everybody, those rankings. And I know you said earlier this year, you know, Ronald has played now in only 108 games. I would assume baseball experience wise, he's not a rookie anymore. No, he's not a freshman. And a comebacker flagged by Vargas. If he doesn't knock it down, that's in center field. The Braves lead. No such luck. Vargas with a terrific play. Gloved it, knocked it down, picked it up, and broke Acuna and the Braves' heart. No score in the third. Header on Fox Sports Southeast. First, it's Bowling Green and Georgia Tech at noon Eastern, followed by Rice and Wake Forest at 3:30. ACC Saturdays on South is presented by your local Ford dealer. No score. Bottom of the third inning. Julio Tehran will face Plawecki, Vargas, and Brandon Nimmo. Julio gave up the leadoff double, but that's the only Mets hit. As he faces Plawecki, the third Mets catcher to start a game. In as many days in this series. Tomas Nito started on Tuesday night. Evan Mezzarocco last night. Tonight it's Kevin Plawecki, and he drives one deep to left, and the Mets have the lead. Long home run, about 15 rows up in left, seventh homer for Plawecki, and New York strikes in the third to lead 1 0. That is Plawecki's first career hit against Julio, and it was a no-doubter. Yeah, he had been 0 for 11 with four strikeouts. Fastball riding up and in on him. Pretty good poke in this ballpark. So Vargas now staked to a 1-0 lead. Jason's batting a buck 60. And takes a strike. Julio's now allowed 26 home runs. That's hit to third. That is a fair ball. Nice play by Camargo and Flaherty with the stretch at first. One out. Just kind of nubbed off the end of the bat. Had a little spin right on the edge of the grass and almost bounced away from him. 
Johan nice. Got to hang on to that. And a good job by Field and Culbreth to make the call. That is the home plate umpire's call down the lines until the ball gets to the bag. And he had a good look at it. It was fair when caught. And Camargo retires the pitcher. Here's Nimmo. He doubled and was left stranded in the first inning. Good pitch and one and two for the Mets center fielder Brandon Nimmo. And a swing and a miss. Julio strikes out Nimmo. That is number two for Julio in the game. Two outs after the Plowecki homer. Strikeouts certainly no stranger for. For Julio, that's 159 for him on the year in 172 innings. Rosario, the first man to strike out for the Mets tonight. Boy, had him flinching with that pitch, didn't he? 0 and 1. He's chased that pitch this whole series. That slider down and in, down and away. And he chased it again. So back to back strikeouts for Julio. He gave up the home run to Plawecki. That's the first run of the night for either club. But don't despair. Ozzy Albies leads off the fourth in a one nothing game. College football and Braves coverage. Catch an ACC doubleheader tomorrow at noon and 3.30 Eastern. Then our evening Braves coverage at 6.30 Eastern time. Your fall lineup is presented by Landmark Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. I know our statistician Drew Jenkins would join me in saying we got to get Georgia Tech back on the rails here. Get them going again. I'll let you and Drew talk about that as we go to the <laughs> fourth inning. Marcus leads by a one nothing score. Let's see what adjustments the Braves make their second time through the order. First pitch swing by Ozzy. A lot of that from both clubs tonight. And another pop up. This one into center. Nimmo an easy catch and Vargas is breezing right along. He's gotten 10 outs on 31 pitches.
Nick Marquez has struck out on three pitches to end the opening inning. That is very rare. Brian Sitker has said that over the next couple of days he will give some of his regulars nights off. Tonight it was Ender and Freddie Freeman. He's not going to take everybody out of the starting lineup, but one or two guys at a time. You might see Nick Marcakis miss a game in Philadelphia. But make no mistake about it, these are very important games collectively and certainly individually. As you see, Nick R. Zaxby's indescribably good player. 12 RBIs in 18 games. Similar work against just about everybody in the division for Nick. That's hit right to Smith at first. Easy play, two outs. Curveball's hard to wait on it. So slow and such a big roundhouse curve. It's a little bit like Jerry Blevins who throws one coming out of their bullpen. So I'll ask you, is this a guy that you could, should you decide to, move up in the box against? Yes. Especially for the left-handers. Try to take that pitch away from him. But we don't see much of that anymore. Guys don't don't move around much. They have a place they're comfortable with and they plant and stay there. Curve balls and changeups from Vargas have been very effective. His fastball has been good enough, especially when you put it there. That went 84 miles an hour, but in a perfect spot. 35 pitches, 27 strikes. For Vargas now. And another. It's 0 and 2. Was it two years ago he had the great year for Kansas City? Yeah. Look at the numbers for you for Vargas who before this season had played for the Mets before but last pitched at Shea Stadium that was kind of an odd stat Line two, the second baseman McNeil, who is playing in the shift. And Kurt Suzuki and the Braves are out of luck. Atlanta's had one base runner. They've got one hit, and they trail 1-0. Young history. It's Saturday, November 17th. Kennesaw State versus Jacksonville State. Go to Braves.com for all the ticket information. And Kevin Plowecki homer. The difference in this game that led off the third inning. Julio Tehran back to work in the fourth with McNeil Conforto and Jay Bruce coming up.
Braves had no luck against Jacob DeGrom last night. They had two hits. They have one hit tonight through four innings against Vargas. McNeil flied out his first time up, so he's 0 for 1. And that's foul by the on deck circle. Strike one. Another pretty good crowd on hand tonight. Teams were lucky last night. We were all very lucky last night. Game was two hours, 22 minutes, thanks to Mr. DeGrom being so effective. Because about five minutes after the game ended, the skies opened up and it poured here. No balls, two strikes for McNeil. Julio struck out the final two hitters of the third inning, so he's got three of those in the game. And is about to make his 47th pitch of the game. And it missed. One and two. Well, you mentioned the crowd tonight. They're going to have a giant crowd here Saturday. That's the day that David Wright is expected to start against the Marlins. Let's host Miami for the final three games. And a lot of Braves in the traveling party were hoping that David Wright might appear as a pinch hitter in this series. Duval in left got a good jump. McNeil's retired. He's over two, one away. In fact, the Mets are. Going to open the gates at 4:30 for their game Saturday to let all the fans get here early to watch David Wright and the Mets take batting practice. They want their fan base to soak up every possible moment that David Wright will be wearing that Mets uniform over the final weekend. That's smart. Good idea. As Conforto bats and takes a strike. David Wright hasn't played a major league game since late May. 2016, May 27th to be exact. And he is, I don't want to say at peace with his decision to step away from the game, but at least he will leave Joe knowing that he did everything he possibly could to come back and even play in one major league game. Yeah, I he really has no choice. You know, it, it's like Tom Glavin said the other night, talking about his old teammate. There comes a point where you have to decide what kind of life you want to lead from this point forward. And what inherent risks are there if you keep trying to play with all the back and neck problems he's had? So all of baseball will be watching the Mets and Marlins on Saturday. We'll be in Philadelphia. Our middle game with the Phillies. High to Conforto, one and two your count. David's had a, a good career, uh, a successful career. He's been well paid for it. He's much loved here in this city. No one's ever going to forget him. Seven time All Star, the fourth team captain in the history of the Mets. Won the gold glove a couple of times. Just a, a terrific player, terrific ambassador. There's one or two times in there where I don't say both of them, but at least one of those times with the gold glove, the chipper should have won. Mm -hmm. uh, even Aram's Ramirez might have won it that particular year. Both guys committed fewer errors than David Wright on that particular occasion, as I recall. But how many times have we said sometimes to win the gold glove you have to have a big year at the plate. One of the years he won the gold glove was 2008. Hit 302 33 homers 124 RBI's scored 115 runs. Made 16 errors. And that's inside Conforto walks and again he got ahead of Conforto. And then went to 3 2 he got a fly out the first time it's a walk this time. So it's the first walk for Julio, but it's the 83rd of the year, and that brings up Jay Bruce, who flied out to center. 
Bruce has knocked in a run. 18, I should say, 18 runs in the last 18 games. Injury plagued year for Jay Bruce. It'll be interesting to see how the Mets put all these pieces together next year. If you've got Conforto, Nimmo, Cespedes, Smith, and Bruce, how does that alignment work? I know it's the nature of the beast to talk about the gold glove and how it, good offense reflects on it, but if that's the case, then they, they're voting for the wrong thing. Uh, if something is wrong or amiss in the way they're voting, if they're letting that the offense bleed into their their vote. It's about defense regardless of offense. I think of Mark Belanger and all the gold gloves he won at shortstop for Baltimore. Mm -hmm. Well maybe my point is that sometimes it's the offensive numbers are what draw people's eyes to a particular player's years. You don't often see the highlight shows talk about a great defensive play as much as you see the homers and the big hits oh, and the RBIs true. and all that. That's true. Porto back at first. He has all of two stolen bases on the year. Let's see if Bruce can hit a ground ball at someone. Braves have a shift on for him. And he tried to beat the shift and sliced it out of play to the left. Good try by Bruce. Good result for the Braves. A ball and two strikes. You know, these games for the Braves, uh, the next counting tonight, the next four games. Uh, for the guys that do rotate in and get some at bats in place of the regular starters. These are key at bats for the Braves players. Much like it is for the Braves pitchers. And Bruce is down on strikes two out. Uh, try to make an impression. But you're still sharp. You're still ready to go and called upon in case of an injury as in the case of Hansby. I think Charlie Culberson is he gets more bats than most guys uh, rotating in. And it's begun to rain. Uh, I said 1 a.m. What time is it? Well, it's 1 a.m. in London, I think, <laughs> so they were right, <laughs> at least partially. As Razor bats, he flied out his first time and takes low, a one. Kevin Plowacki's leadoff homer in the third, the only run so far tonight. There's a team out there that I want to throw a high five out to, and that is Pittsburgh. The Pirates are playing great baseball right now, making it very hard on all the contenders. They're not phoning it in, they're not running through a lot of uh, call ups and all that they're playing solid baseball. Runner goes pitch low no chance for Suzuki. It's a steal for Conforto and he's in scoring position for Frazier. As the Pirates did last night when they rallied and tied the game in the ninth with the Cubs and lost in the tenth. But you got to admire and respect Clint Hurdle's team for continuing to play solid baseball. If they win two more games they guarantee themselves a winning season. And a pop up. Frazier's struggles will continue if this ball is caught. Acuna's looking at Ozzy but he's there to make the play. And Julio escapes the fourth inning despite a one out walk. Time for the Braves bats to do something. It's one nothing Mets.
Kinds of great features available. Download MLB at bat today. One nothing New York. Camargo Culberson and Duvall coming up. Jason Vargas is rolling. And it's raining more heavily now. He has thrown just 39 pitches through four innings and one pitch. He's allowed one hit that a single to Flaherty. And this one popped up. Right side McNeil has plenty of room. And puts the squeeze on that. This is kind of. Uh, I think. The proof that you talk about a lot. Chip and that is. Seven out of times even the best hitters make out seven out of ten times. And when you're throwing strikes with as many as Vargas is throwing, he's winning more than seven out of ten right now. But uh, it's proof that you can throw strikes even with his velocity and get away with it. Yep. And that's why I said it would be as Charlie tries to bunt. Vargas spins and fires, and Smith reached out with a big right paw to make that play for the second out. Not just for the Braves, but it'd be so refreshing in baseball if you have a guy dealing like Vargas is, move up in the box and make him make an adjustment. Right now, he's just rocking and firing, and Braves have very few answers for him at this point. I like what Charlie just did. Try something different. Just didn't quite bun it hard enough. So seven straight have been retired. Atlanta with one hit. Through four and two thirds innings against Jason Vargas tonight. And of all the batter. Strike he pitched, one. He pitched into the sixth inning his last start at Washington got no decision. But only gave up three hits in that game and two runs. Walk two struck out eight. And gave up a homer. He's allowed 18 homers on the year. And you're right about his uh, year with the Royals last year 18 and 11. He went 12 and 3 in the first half of the season before slumping badly, which carried over into his return to the Mets this year. They signed him to a two year deal with an option for a third at age 30. Five now. Another pop. Smith with a lot of foul ground to play with. Reaches up, makes the play, and the Braves quickly and quietly are down in the fifth. Talking about the legacy that David Wright has left here in New York and how he'll make that final start as a Met on the 29th. Well, the Braves are very familiar with him from playing him over the years, and Brian Snicker was singing his praises because David Wright was a third baseman when Brian Snicker coached third base. He said they had a lot of great conversations, that he is a classy, top shelf pro, and nothing but respect for him. And I was talking to Mike Fultonevich in the clubhouse, and he said his favorite and least favorite David Wright memory is back in 2016. He gave up a home run to David Wright and he said this stadium got so loud that he even got goosebumps guys. Plenty of those moments for David Wright in a Mets uniform. As Dominic Smith leads off 
and fouls one away. That you really get to know somebody uh, as a coach. When you're that close to when you're first or third base, you're always having carrying on chats between innings and between batters. Line to center and right at Ronald Acuna. He's got it. One out. Well, David Wright at the moment, a lifetime 296 big league hitter, 242 homers, 970 RBIs, and 1,777 career hits. And a lot of them have come against the Braves. Yeah, I think it's safe to say that were it not for the injuries, he certainly would have gone over 2,000 hits and over. How many RBIs? 1777. That was hits. Oh, excuse me. RBIs? Uh, 970. Yeah, excuse close me. to 1,000 RBIs. Certainly would have gone over that. Well, Tom Glavin played with David, knows him very well, as did Jeff Francoeur. Like the rest of the Braves, they've sung his praises as well. And Tom, I think, said that he's pretty sure that number five is going to be retired here someday. I would think so. It'll be a tremendous honor for David Wright. You can just you can just watch David play and know and you could see the joy that he experienced being out on the field even when he took the field he always carried his glove in his right hand not his left when he went out on the diamond that glove was flipping around. Oh. He, he just strikes. had a bounce in his step. He did. He would go to third base. And that ever present smile. I mean, that's the other thing about David. He was always, as you said, playing with joy. He was as happy as he could possibly be playing in the major leagues. So he will be missed. And a great send off here on Saturday. I'm sure there'll be a few moist eyes. In Mets car. Swing and a miss. Julio gets some revenge on Plawecki. Strikes him out. Five strikeouts for Tehran tonight. And here's Vargas, the New York pitcher. Julio's pitching a good ball game. I wonder how long they'll let him go. Last night, Newcomb, five innings, one hit, shutout ball. Struck out eight, but he walked four. I know he was having a little trouble with that humidity and the perspiration. Tonight's not not an issue where that's concerned. There's another McNeil bat for this pitcher. DeGrom was using one last night too. No knob. Well, when a guy's hitting 335 and has 32 hits in a month, I can imagine everybody's going to see if it's the bat. Or is it the guy swinging it? Well, it reminds me of what used to be described as a bottle bat. I think more in softball terms than baseball, but where you had a big barrel and then kind of a skinny handle and the relative shape of a bottle. Is choked up and now faces a 3 1 pitch. And now it's full. To the left side, Charlie handles and fires to first, and Julio has a 1 2 3 fifth. The Braves have one hit. They trail one nothing. Time to get to work offensively.
Atlanta Braves Baseball is sponsored by your local Ford dealer, the Georgia Lottery, and by the All-South Highway Safety Team. The All-South Highway Safety Team reminds you to play it safe by always wearing your seatbelt. Bright lights, big city in New York, but so far Atlanta's offense the last two nights has gone through a power outage. They had two hits last night against Jacob DeGrom and Seth Lugo. Tonight through five innings, they have but one hit and one base runner against Jason Vargas. Braves country, your NL East champion Braves are gearing up for October baseball and division series tickets are on sale. They won't last long. If you want to be with us at SunTrust Park next week, head over to Braves.com slash postseason and get your tickets today. Marcus finishing up his warm up tosses. He'll have Flaherty, Tehran, and Ronald Acuna Jr. coming up. Here's the rain has stopped. Brief passing shower a few moments ago. Before the game, we were talking about postseason, possible opponents set up, and we had this bracket for you. And I, I don't really have anything to say except I love looking at this. Kind of cool, and, isn't it? Yeah, I just wanted to have him put it up again because it's cool. And those are the seeds right now the numbers next to the teams in terms of what they would look like going into the postseason right now the Braves would play the Rockies and the Cubs would play the winner of the wild card which right now would be Milwaukee and L.A. and St. Louis would be out. Clarity has the lone Braves hit. And Vargas delivers a strike. Milwaukee is rolling they've won four straight. The Brewers finish the season with the Tigers in interleague play at home. Detroit is 30 games under 500. The Dodgers have to go to San Francisco and they will run into Madison Bumgarner. I think Bumgarner is going to pitch tomorrow. I believe so. I think they see Rodriguez and uh, Suarez too. And Kershaw will pitch of course for Los Angeles in that big series. The Rockies will host the Nationals in the final series out at Coors Field. Flaherty drives this ball hard toward left. Conforto back. Pedaling up against the wall made the play. Flaherty hit it hard again. And a nice grab by Conforto in left field with the wind pushing the ball that way. Four out number one. Ball jumped off Flaherty's bat. Julio a sacrifice bunt in the third inning. He got Flaherty to second, and Acuna's smash up the middle was knocked down by Vargas. Otherwise, the Braves might have scored the first run of the night. Might be one of those offensive games where Julio has to take matters in his own hands. He homered here on August 5th against Corey Oswald. And maybe Vargas and his pitch assortment is Julio's bat speed. Somewhere around 88 down the middle. Good take. And two balls, two strikes. Not having to work very hard, is he? Nope. Still two and two. Braves have set their rotation for the upcoming series with the Phillies. And it might be a preview of what you see in the playoffs. Fulton Evich in game one, Sanchez game two, Kevin Gossman on Sunday. As Julio's down on strikes, 10 up, 10 down for Vargas. Sanchez and Nola will be the pitchers on Saturday. Philadelphia has not yet announced their starters on Friday or on Sunday. I did read something in the press from Philadelphia today, though, on a release that Jared Eikhoff 
might pitch Friday. And then Nola Saturday. No word on Sunday. That might be a Johnny Holstaff game, and Lord knows the Phillies have 16 relievers. They have a stable. Yes. For Holstaff. The Phillies have lost eight in a row, swept in Atlanta, swept in Colorado. They're limping home tonight and will play the Braves tomorrow at Citizens Bank. Here's Acuna. Ronald's 0 for 2. And not anymore. Base hit on the first pitch. So that's the second Atlanta hit. And he represents the tying run for Ozzy, who bounced out to short and popped out to center on the first pitch of that sequence. Ronald Acuna has an outside chance at a 2020 season. He's already got the home runs, he's got 26, he's got 16 stolen bases. Might see him try to steal here. Ozzy's best average side of the plate is this side as a right hand hitter batting 339. Let's see if he can chase Acuna around here and he'll draw throw the first. Side corner strike. He's hit that spot a lot tonight. Braves trying to pick up their 14th win this year against the Mets. Last done by an Atlanta club in 66. The 64 Braves also won 14 games. Talking about some lean. New York Mets years in the early 60s early days boy it was quite rough no balls and a strike One ball one strike. It's driven to right field. That's down for a base hit. Jay Bruce will pick that one up. And Atlanta has back to back hits with two outs. And who better to be up in this spot than Nick Markakis. So the first scoring chance for the Braves comes here in the sixth inning. Love to see this from Ozzy. Sinker down and away. Didn't try to pull it. And hit it hard to right field. Big open spaces over there. So here's Markakis with a chance to get the game tied with a single. He might be thinking about bigger things here. He's hit lefties well, 294 average coming in. But 0 for 2 so far tonight. Sweeper catches a corner. Strike one. And an 86 mile an hour fastball, and Nick swung through it. 0 and yeah, 2. Yeah, I'm telling you, he, he's kind of staying out of the gray area. He's staying out of the 90 to 92 area. He's throwing under that. Mm -hmm. If you can go over that speed, then you're in good shape, too. Now Nick's in a tough spot. No balls, two strikes. And nice stop by Plowecki. Begins in the Mets bullpen as Vargas. 
is two on and two out here. Mets one, Atlanta nothing. And time call. Yeah, you mentioned those early season, early history numbers for the Mets. 62 was their first year. They went 40 and 120, 51 and 111, 53 and 109, 50 and 112. Yeah, that's tough to get started there, huh? <laughs> yeah. A ball and two strikes. And that missed inside. In those days, when you had an expansion team, too, you only were able to draft from your league, not both leagues. I don't remember how many players teams were able to protect from the draft, but didn't leave a whole lot of prospects out there. Limited choices for sure. Round ball, that is knocked down. Rosario scrambles, fires, and made a great play. He had Acuna to deal with on the base pass, but he stayed with it, scrambled to his feet, and threw out Marquecas to end an Atlanta threat in the sixth. One nothing, New York, thanks to a Kevin Plawecki home run leading off the third inning. Top of the Mets batting orders coming up against Julio, who's pitching a good game. He has walked one, struck out five, and he's surrendered but two hits in tonight's affair. One was a homer, though, and that's why there's a one nothing deficit. Nimmo has doubled and struck out tonight. So he's reached base in 32 of his last. 33 games. That first inning double snapped an 0-4-11 slide at the plate. He too an excitable player. You mentioned Hunter Pence like the way he scampers around the bases. Especially when he takes a walk he hustles everywhere. Nice to see. It's taken low ball two. Oh, come on now. Well, you wanted that one. Uh, Field and Cobra thought it was too high or too far inside. Looked pretty good on Fox tracks. That ball's in a strike. It was neither. Demo 
Oh, with eight walks in his last three games plus. Now looking at a 3 2 count. And that's back our way foul. And it's another walk. Ninth walk for Nimmo in his last four games, his 28th walk this month. And an auspicious start for New York, leading 1 0. Let's see if Julio unleashes that slider. Rosario has swung and missed that a lot tonight and in this series. As Joe said, he has struck out swinging twice. Setting up outside to that same spot. Off Julio's glove. It'll ricochet to Camargo, and he'll stay with the play to make the throw to first. Tough break for Tehran. If that sticks, she might have gotten two instead. That's as good as a sacrifice for Nimmo's in scoring position. One out for McNeil. Yeah, and Julio does such a great job of feeling his position. Too bad he couldn't come up with that cleanly. Always squared up to home plate, ready to handle anything hit back to him. So runner at second, one out. Camargo with the nice pickup and throw. And McNeil 0 for 2 with two flyouts to Duvall and left. Another shot that way. This one, however, into the seats. And strike one to McNeil. Up and away. One ball, one strike. Jesse Biddle's up in the Atlanta bullpen. Nobody up for New York. with Kurt and Julio trying to get on the same page for signs. Now they're in agreement. One ball, one strike. At least thought they were. Popped him up. Charlie Culberson at short at the cut of the outfield grass. Now a step or two into the pasture. And McNeil's retired for the third time. Two outs. And here's Conforto. He too has popped out, walked, and stolen a base. Well, he has made some big pitches when he's had to tonight. Lead off double started his night. Got out of that mess. One out walk in the fourth escape trouble. Now he's trying to pitch around a leadoff walk here in the sixth to keep it one nothing. Yeah, I got ambushed by Plawecki leading off the third inning for that homer. 
Otherwise he's had good stuff. He's been around the plate. And he's going to get out of it if that stayed fair. No such luck. Foul ball. And strike one to Conforto. If you want to pick on something, it's that he has gotten ahead in the count early and gone to deep counts then to get the outs. But the fact remains he's only given up the one run. Shift on again for Conforto. And up and away. Three defenders on the right side of the diamond for the Braves. Juan Camargo, the only man on the left side. He's well off the line at third. Demo with long strides has a big lead. Drops start to fall again. Little pop and playable for Charlie. He's there, and the shift helped Atlanta. Retire Conforto. A leadoff walk is wasted by the Mets. Kurt Suzuki leads off the seventh. It's one nothing. will start things off. Seventh inning has been a magical time for the Braves offense and it's been a magical last 12 games for Kurt on our Georgia lottery hitting the jackpot feature. It's over two tonight. He's popped to right. He's lined to short. And he swings the first pitch right to Rosario into the shift and across the diamond for out number one. Boy, he's gotten a lot of first pitch out. Yes, he has 65 pitches with one out in the seventh. Versus Julio, who has thrown 89, I believe, through his six innings. The ever present Anibal Sanchez talking with Julio and Ender about something or other tonight. As a strike called for Johan Camargo, he has struck out and popped out. Rivera in on that conversation. And this will be a very nice game for the Braves to win tonight. They know that Colorado has already won. If the Braves fall tonight, they'd have the same record as the Rockies. 
And if the clubs ended the season that way, Colorado would host games one and two, assuming they win the West. But the bats have been very quiet since Jacob deGrom took the mound last night. Braves got hits in the first and the second innings. That was it. I said before the game that boy, it's really bad luck to have to follow Jacob deGrom because everything you throw looks so much fatter to hit than what he throws. But Vargas is proving that to be wrong. He may not throw as hard, but he's having similar success tonight. And this is a different man than the man the Braves pummeled earlier this year. A 311 ERA in his last seven starts. He's gone four and one in that stretch. So he's trying to finish his season in strong form. Foul. That's hugging the grass. You better run just in case that ball bounces fair. That was close. And smart move by Camargo to recognize that, but he'll head back to the plate. Still a one two count. Especially the way it was spinning. And more and more change ups to Johan. Something else off speed strikes him out. Five strikeouts for Vargas. Right now, the Braves are befuddled at the plate. They are just bailing and wailing and making contact on the first or second pitch. And then when they don't do that, Vargas is able to strike him out. Johan may have to start going up there looking for something off speed earlier in the count. So here's Charlie Clutch. Let's see if he can. Tie the game with a swing of the bat here. It's outside, ball one. Charlie came into the game having played 27 fewer games than Dansby Swanson, had two fewer home runs. But a higher OPS, but over 100 points. Man, oh man, has he had that off-speed stuff tonight? 79 on that, around 82, 83 on his curveball. This is a Tom Glavin-like. This is. Outstanding yeah. performance from Vargas. And if it's working, why change it? Six strikeouts for him, another perfect inning as we head to the stretch. Atlanta's offense frustrated so far tonight. One nothing Mets. Time for the stretch brought to you by Sinovas, the Bank of Here.
not any longer. He's gone six innings tonight, two hits, one run. And I think Brian Snitker would have to say he's very thrilled with the way his starters pitched in this series. 16 combined innings by Toussaint, Newcomb, and Tehran. They gave up a total of six hits and three runs in those three starts. There were some walks in there, but yep. the bottom line is not many runs and quality work innings wise. Made good pitches when they needed to to avoid big innings. Jesse Biddle pitching for the first time in five days. And the first pitch is rifled into center field by Jay Bruce, a base hit. Jesse last worked against Philadelphia. Did not retire batter, gave up a hit, a walk, and a run. And his splits continue to be reverse splits. Better numbers against him by left handed hitters. 250 average for the year. Frazier roll for two. He's flying out to left. He's flying out to center. Biddle would like to see him bounce into a double play. I told you Frazier is a candidate for that. Let's have a couple of men with 10 or more double play balls. Frazier's one of them. He has 10 on the button. Kevin Plowacki, the catcher, is hitting to 11. And he's lurking in this inning. One ball, one strike. Cubs have struck first in the second inning. They lead the Pirates 2 0 at Wrigley Field. Cubs with a slim half game lead over Milwaukee. And the Cubs have the Cardinals coming up this weekend. As Joe said, St. Louis at the moment is on the outside looking in. If that continues, they would like nothing better than to wreck the Cubs season. Well, a definite advantage for Milwaukee playing Detroit at home. As opposed to the Cubs playing the Cardinals. Little dribbler, that's going to stay foul in the grass. Two and two to count. Trevor Williams and John Lester are the pitchers in Chicago. Jake Arietta and Anthony Senzatella were the hurlers in Colorado. Arietta took the loss. Adam Wainwright, by the way, will start for the Cardinals tomorrow. Three and two. Lead off single for Bruce. Now Frazier faces a full count. Let's see how Mickey Callaway plays it. Not going, and doesn't matter. The pitch missed high, so a single and a walk. So Biddle missed with a high fastball on the 2 2 pitch, then missed with a breaking ball to send Frazier to first. Looks like Brad Brock is getting ready in the Atlanta bullpen. First things first, here's Dominic Smith. He's popped out and lined out. That's another left handed batter. And those are the hitters that have given Jesse the most trouble. There's allowed six homers, four to lefties. 250 average by left handed hitters and a sub 200 average. By right handers. And Smith showed bunt. 0 and 1. Down the left field line, that ball is slicing, and it is a foul ball. That was close. Uh -huh. Not a lot of room down there. So narrow, they had to put the numbers vertically. Bruce back at second, Frazier at first, Dominic Smith riding a four game hitting streak. 
way behind in the count here. The 0-2. This one again to left. Duval near that wall. And that is also a foul ball. He couldn't come up with it. Drifting if you're getting to that spot as quickly as you can, then adjust. Did Jay Bruce hurt himself? He's back at the second base bag. He's had a history of hip problems this year. And Mickey Calloway's gonna ask for time. He's gonna ask Brian Onora if he can go talk to Jay Bruce, who says, Nope, I'm all right. But Bruce looked like an 85 year old man walking back to the second base bag. So Smith gets a swing on the house here. Still 0 2. And just as served, Biddle strikes him out. And there's the first out of the inning. Here's Plowecki. And here is Brian Snitker. He's going to go get Brad Brock and take down Jesse Biddle. Biddle faces three hitters, retires one of them, and he'll leave with a mess on his hands in the bottom of the seventh inning. The Mets leading one nothing, two on, one out. It'll be Brock versus Plowecki here in New York in Game Three. Visit your nearest Advance Auto Parts store to get the quality parts you want from people that know a lot about them. Big spot for Brad Brock, who's helped solidify the Atlanta Relief Corps. He and Johnny Venters, by and large, have done very good work in relief. Indeed, they have. And this is one of those situations where uh, Ryan Snitker might be saying, you know what, Brad, this might be a type of situation you'd come into in the postseason. Runners on base, kind of help come come in and clean up the mess, get a ground ball. He had worked in games on the 14th, 16th, 18th, and 22nd of September, so he's had a few days off to rest up after the clinch last Saturday. And as I said, Plowecki is a double play candidate, 11 of them on the year. That leads the Mets team. And a first pitch strike gets the sequence started. Plowecki's knocked in the only run. He homered in the third inning off Julio. It's one nothing Mets. That's where we stand. There a strike at 94. Brands inherited 21 runners. Only five of them have scored. And he 
He sat down 47 of 67 first batters in relief. This one hammered towards center. Acuna dives and makes a gorgeous catch. Excellent play by Acuna to rob Plawecki of a hit. So hard to get a good jump on a ball hit right at you in center field, but he did. Read it perfectly made. Devin Menzoraco is going to come on and hit for Vargas. And he'll come up with two on and now two out. So Brock gets the first batter with a little help from his defense. Menzoraco went 0 for 4 with three strikeouts here last night. Vargas was terrific. Seven shutout innings against the Braves, and he gave up three hits. Six strikeouts and no walks. He threw a ton of strikes. So it's up to the beleaguered Mets bullpen to protect what's now a one nothing lead. Ball one. Anthony Swarzak is up and throwing for the Mets. It appears he'll be the next reliever. He'll have the bottom of the Braves order coming up. Remember, Atlanta has Freddie Freeman and Ender Inciarte available to pinch hit. They did not start this game by design for Brian Snitker, but they are able late to play tonight. Strike one and one. Better pitch than the pitch before that was called a strike. And a couple from Field and Cobra yeah. that are a little shaky. Two balls and a strike. He might be getting ready to bat in the third spot in the eighth. First things first. 3 1 pitch lifted high in the air toward left. Two ball is back. That ball is going to by your relief core a bad combination in the late innings and that's what bites the Braves here in the seventh. That's a rock over the pitch hit three run homer. He's done that to the Braves before. I remember a walk off home run for Mezzarocco as he picks on a high fastball here. Clobbered it. But for Cincinnati a walk off homer I remember one time. And it may have been a pinch hit homer. So it's the Mets catchers for Atlanta nothing. <laughs> With Plawecki hitting the solo homer off Julio. And New York enjoying playing the role of a spoiler tonight. Braves have already clinched the division, but they're trying to make it tough for Atlanta to secure home field advantage. Memo's doubled, walked, and struck out. And found that one at the plate. Good about that missed call, too, on the pitch. It should have been a strike. Now that may have affected the at bat. And instead of a one two count it was two and one then three and one and then Kabumo. The 0 2 pitch. He is fouled away. So in the eighth Braves will have to come back from four down tonight. Duval Flaherty a pinch hitter and then the top of the order for the Braves.
the way still a ball and two strikes. Best Braves threat came in the sixth inning back to back two out singles by Acuna and Albies but Rosario made a great play to rob Marquecas of a hit. The Braves have three hits in total tonight after tallying two last night. And ball two two and two the count. Swing and a miss, and that retires the side. Great catch by Acuna gave the Braves some hope. But Devin Mesoraco hit a pitch hit three run homer to send us to the eighth, down four nothing. Xfinity delivers the fastest internet with the best in-home Wi-Fi experience by Delta Airlines and by Georgia Natural Gas. Get $100 when you sign up and use promo code SAVE100. Mets 4, Atlanta nothing. Shame of that three-run homer was not only did it extend the Mets' lead, but it makes things tougher for the Braves who have six outs left to get something done against the Mets bullpen that's really had a rough year. Anthony Swarzak would certainly apply. You see those numbers. In fairness to him, he's been oft injured this year, but still a six point ERA is a six point ERA. He's got good luck on his fastball, though, mid 90s, slider and a change. Adam Duvall takes a strike, and the top of the eighth is underway. The Mets bullpen has given up. 66 earned runs in its last 84 innings. That's a 7.04 ERA. They've given up 82 home runs this year. So you've got some hope, but you like your chances a lot better down one nothing as opposed to four nothing. We'll see what the Braves can do here with seven, eight, nine, and hopefully more to follow on the lineup card here tonight. There's a liner past Rosario. There's a start. Duvall with a sharp single. So the Braves put the leadoff man on here in the eighth inning. That's the fourth Braves single of the night. And here's Flaherty, who had the first one back in the third inning. That snapped a string of 30 consecutive Braves batters retired by the Mets staff, dating back to DeGrom's masterpiece last night. First leadoff man to reach tonight. Big hole for Flaherty right side. And 
Matt Swarzak missed ball one. for the seats foul. Swarzak was signed as a free agent after the 2017 season. And that signed him through the 2019 year. He's been a well traveled guy. Broke in with Minnesota. Also pitched in Cleveland, the Yankees, White Sox, and Milwaukee last year. There he go. He did not. C.B. Bucknor with the call to third. Two balls and a strike. Good pitch. Two and two. Again, every one of these at bats very important to Atlanta hitters. Wall just had a base hit. He needed that. Five for his last 50. At the very least, get him over if you can. Two and two. And now full count. Rio Ruiz has grabbed a bat. Looks like he'll pinch it for Brock. Three balls, two strikes. Four nothing, New York. Here it is. And a good at bat for Flaherty. So a single and a walk for Swarzak. And the Braves have a threat now. That is the first Brave turn a base on balls tonight. And the crowd of 24,000 plus quieted for the moment. They've seen this movie before from the Mets Relief Corps. Let's see if Atlanta can push across a few runs here. Crowd count in New York 24,824. For well, game three, our finale against the Mets this year. Mickey Calloway is on his way out and that's going to be all for Swarzak. So he doesn't retire a batter. He gives up a hit a walk and he'll be taken down very quickly. We'll see if Rio Ruiz continues or if Brian Snitker makes a counter move. Membership, you'll get discounts on food, beverage, merchandise, parking, and access to exclusive Braves events. Find out all the details at Braves.com slash 
A list. Rio Ruiz will be taken down as the Mets bring on a left hander. It's Daniel Zamora. Well, as we hear so often here at City Field, when the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's Zamora. Left hander. He's the only other left hander they've had in their bullpen this year besides Jerry Blevins. Well, he is a strikeout guy, 14 of them in just seven and two thirds innings. He's, he's like uh, Vargas a little bit. High 80s, tops out at about 90 miles an hour with a good curve. Throws that curve a lot. Two on, nobody out. Braves threatening late. And that one slings up there and missed. Ball one. Braves like this matchup with Tyler Flowers. He handles lefties very well. And that's taken low to an O. Braves try to give him a finish in New York tonight. Trailing 4 0, 2 0 pitch. And that caught a corner barely. 2 and 1. Flowers a 361 hitter against lefties. Five home runs, 15 RBIs. One of his homers came against Chris Sale of the Red Sox up in Boston. And he was out in front. That's fouled away. It's quickly two and two. Acuna next, then Albies. There are the splits for Tyler at the plate. This guy kind of drops low three quarter two. Should give the right handers a decent look at the ball coming out of his hand. Strike three called a borderline pitch and Zamora got it. His curveball is such that it's easy to give up on. It's so far out there, looks like there's no way it's going to come back to the plate. That one did, as I'm assuming several others have, because of all the strikeouts he's recorded. Well, got a bonus call too that a little outside. So he got flowers. Now the top of the order is coming up for Atlanta. Two on, one out in a four run Met game. Told you all summer long the Braves offense in the eighth inning or later is the subject of our landmark always best feature and still first in all those categories including runs which are most important at 190 chance to add to that 
number right here. This is Drew Smith. Mid 90s fastball, sometimes 96. Curveball changeup. Braves saw him in the seventh inning of the first game here in New York. He gave up a hit, struck out two. In relief of Noah Syndergaard, who was terrific in six innings, and then the Braves cashed in the New York bullpen's woes, scoring seven runs against their relievers. Haven't got a run yet tonight, but you got the right guys coming up. Here's Acuna, two on, one out. Hammered into left field. That's a base hit. Here comes Duvall around third. He's going to score. The throw will be cut off. And Ronald Acuna with a two hit night has his 61st RBI. And the Braves are on the board. It's four to one. And they do indeed add on to that eighth inning total. This was smoked. Fastball riding in on him and. Again, clears that front hip out of the way and hits a rope over Frazier. So two hits for Acuna. And Ozzie Albies with a single his last time up. Let's see if the Braves can keep the line moving here. Tying run at the plate. First pitch swing, fly ball right center. But playable for Bruce, who's got it. And now gives way to Nimmo. And the runner at second, Flaherty, will tag up. Acuna back to first, and that's the second out. Yeah, Bruce was there and then was called off at the last moment. And Albies just missed, but again, first pitch swing. And now Marquez is up again with two outs. Nick was robbed by Rosario of a run scoring hit his last time up. And his average now at 300. Nothing in two. 97 on each of the last two pitches. toward first but right at Smith and that's the inning Atlanta settles for one run in the eighth inning the run scored is charged to Swarzak and it's 4-1.
by SunTrust. Confidence starts here. Braves get a run in the eighth inning. It's still a 4-1 New York lead now as we head to the bottom of the eighth inning. Max Fried is the man on the mound for the Braves, but first we'll tell you about Fantasy Camp. Braves Fantasy Camp returns to Orlando in January of 2019. Space is limited. Sign up for Fantasy Camp at Braves.com. Max Freed last worked on the 23rd against Philadelphia. Two good innings. Gave up a couple of hits and a walk. No runs. Struck out two. Rosario's the batter. 0 for 3 to start the game for New York. And that's bounced foul. Strike one. Yankees beat Tampa Bay 12 to 1 today. Interesting story in that game. CC Sabathia, after benches were warned, hit a Tampa Bay batter with a pitch. That, in and of itself, not that big a story. But after warnings were issued, he was thrown out of the game two innings shy in his last start of the year of a total of 150, which would have guaranteed him another half million dollars in bonus money. <laughs> that was very costly. Hit batsman. Very costly protection. But the Yankees getting tuned up for a wild card matchup with Oakland. New York now with a two game lead for the home field advantage in that matchup as Rosario keeps chasing that off speed stuff and strikes out for the third time tonight. Good start for Max in relief. Wonder if he might find a way to make the postseason roster. I think he's got an excellent chance. Another audition here tonight. Lane falling a little more steadily now as Jeff McNeil bats. He's 0 for 3. Nothing wrong with 96 on a corner. Uh, he didn't want any part of that pitch either. McNeil had a funny swing at it. And an even funnier swing from 96 to 76 miles an hour on successive pitches. Outstanding. Long relief, also a key for any postseason team. Max can supply that too. And three pitches takes care of McNeil, who's been one of the hottest hitters on the planet this month. Back to back strikeouts for Freed. Excellent start to his eighth inning. Two outs. I think Max Freed next year is going to factor huge into the Braves rotation plans. I think he's got a chance to have a big year and to get some experience under his belt this year. That game in St. Louis, terrific. So here's Conforto. He's 0 for 2 with a walk. And that's in for a strike. That's the way it used to be done in the big leagues. You get to the show, learn your apprenticeship in the bullpen, and then as you get more experience and have more and more better results, well, you get a chance to start. If you keep pitching well, you stay in rotation. So Outstanding curveballs here already. No balls, two strikes for Conforto. And Freed brings it. One and two. We're off to Philadelphia after the game tonight. Open up a final regular season series with the Phillies tomorrow. Three very important games for the Braves. Uh, barring a comeback in the ninth inning, will be tied with Colorado for home field advantage in the first round of the playoffs. And by virtue of the same record and Colorado's 5 to 2 record against the Braves in regular season play, Colorado at home home field advantage, meaning the first two games would start at Coors Field in that series.
Ah, he lost Conforto. Got ahead of him 0 2, had some funny swings, and then tried to keep throwing that curveball, and he didn't offer it. Bruce has singled and scored. He came home on Mesoraco's three run homer. A pinch hit shot in the seventh inning that is the difference in the game so far. And Max couldn't throw his fastball over to put him away when he had to. That was called a strike when Zamora was on the mound. Yeah, it's, you know, Fielding's a good home plate umpire, in my opinion, but he's had a Hit or miss night tonight. And a looper into right field is going to get down for a hit. Conforto will throw out an anchor as Marquecas got to it quickly. And some two out trouble for Freed here. A walk and a single. And that brings up Todd Frazier. Walks are rallies. No matter how many outs there are. New York has one here trying to extend the lead. Strike one to Frazier. He's been swinging at everything despite the fact that he walked last inning. Hopefully Max can get him to pop up again something he's done already twice tonight. Yes he did. Fastball there. So two strikes from Freed to Frazier and a little low. That looked to be a strike. Yep. Yeah, I think Fielden's had a few issues around the margins of the plate tonight. Especially down in this game. One two pitch. And Frazier flailed at that and didn't get it. And that's the inning. Freed strikes out the side. A walk and a single thrown in for good measure. Last call for the Braves in the ninth. They need three to get it tied. By Old Dominion, the official freight carrier 
of Major League Baseball. It has been a very successful season for the Braves here at City Field, winning seven of the first nine games. That ties for the most wins in a single season in the New York Mets ballpark. Atlanta needs a ninth inning rally if they're to make it eight and two. And they'll have to do it against Robert Kesselman, who's on to try to save it. He looks for his 13th save on the season. And he'll have Suzuki, Camargo, and Culberson scheduled for the Braves. He had a rough night here, opening night of this series. Took the loss. Came in and started the seventh inning that night. Gave up four runs on three hits. Struck out a couple. Former starter. Uses a lot of different pitches. Fastball, curveball, slider, change. 92 to 94. So Kurt Suzuki will get it started for the Braves. He's 0 for 3. Shift on for him. And Gaselman almost hit him. Ball one. Ninety five on the black evens the count. Area born in Santa Monica, graduated from Westchester High School. Line drive into center field, a good start for Suzuki here in the Atlanta ninth. Here's Johan Camargo. He had trouble with the off speed stuff of Jason Vargas. Let's see what he does with Gesellman. Johan 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts. His five game hitting streak is on the line here in the ninth. Right at the top of the zone. Ball missed way high one and two your count. This is certainly though Chip like you said a little more to Johan's liking. Somebody throwing hard. Big hole right side for him. Let's see if he can fill it. Oh good try but it just missed. Good high. Especially the way the margins have been called by Field and Culbreth. That was a gutsy take. Two and two. Rip there stays alive. Two balls, two strikes. Chicago's extended their lead over the Pirates. That's three nothing at Wrigley Field. Comes playing the Pittsburgh Pirates. Here it's four one New York in the ninth. Runner at first, nobody out. High fly ball toward right center field. But that one is going to be playable by Nimmo on the warning track. Ball died out by the 380 sign close to the Atlanta bullpen gate. And Camargo is 0 for 4 and is the first out of the inning. So a long, loud out for Robert Gazelman. And Charlie Culberson's the batter. Charlie's 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts. He too. 
Had trouble with Vargas's mesmerizing display of off speed stuff. He went seven shutout innings tonight, gave up three hits. In the air to center again. Nimmo's right there. And the Braves are down to their last out. And it'll be Adam Duvall coming up. He singled and scored the lone Braves run one inning ago. Braves have five hits, all singles tonight. And they've been issued one walk. For the last two days in New York, offensively, have been mighty tough. They got no walks last night. DeGrom and Lugo struck out 11. Duvall had a good cut fouled it back strike one. Highlight of the night for Atlanta this evening the solid performance by Julio Tehran who went six innings of one run ball. The only run was a home run by Plawecki. Julio surrendered just two hits and walked just two. He pitched out of first inning trouble. Putting up a leadoff double, but the Braves just couldn't give him much run support. In fact, Julio, one of the lowest run supported pitchers on the club, broken back grounder at third foul. And back at first will be Suzuki and Duvall pick out a new bat. Freddie Freeman's on deck if Duvall could reach. Mets fans on their feet. Trying to watch their club take two out of three from Atlanta. No balls, two strikes. And the pitch. Nearly hit him. In fact, it did hit him. How about that? Wow. On an 0-2 count, Gaselman pitches inside and hits Duvall with a pitch. And now New York will have to face Freddie Freeman. They have a left-hander up in the bullpen. As that one just grazed the uniform buttons of Adam Duvall to keep the game alive. It's Dave Island, the pitching coach out for the Mets. He's buying some time for Jerry Blevins, who I think just got up. Blevins and Freeman have a lengthy history. If memory serves, Freddie has great numbers against Jerry Blevins. But of late, it's been Blevins who's had the better of the matchup. Won't help now. Because he can't come in to face Freddie now. So it will be Gasolman versus Freeman. Freddie six for 19 with a couple of doubles against Robert. Trying to try to keep the line moving here in the ninth. If Freeman reaches, you've got Ender Inciarte next. Ball one. That inning here Tuesday night when Gasolman gave up four runs in the seventh inning, the last batter he faced was Freddie Freeman, whom he struck out. Curve of beauty. Nimmo is playing in Staten Island in center field. I mean, he's about <laughs> five steps away from the warning track. Right. Downfield deep all around. Good leads at first and second for Duvall and Suzuki. The pitch. And now Freeman's down to his last strike.
he almost got hit. Two and two. Just for the record, I don't think this is a situation that Freddie will have to worry about in the postseason. Pinch hitting. Yeah, pretty good chance. Two balls, two strikes. Swing and a miss, and that's your ball game. Chris Elman strikes out Freddie Freeman with a breaking ball, and the Mets take two out of three from Atlanta, winning four to one tonight. Vargas the winner, Tehran the loser. Chris Elman picks up his 13th save and a couple of homers. Too much for Atlanta's offense to overcome tonight. We'll recap it for you from City Field after this.